there's a lot of confusion and uncertainty about glutathione when to take it how much to take it is it helping is it not helping so in this video what i want to do is i want to distill down the exact 101 of glutathione so let's dig in hi my name is dr joel rosen and i'm a professional rejuvenation coach and i help modern day health seeking men and women who are on a quest to tap into the fountain of youth but more importantly, to be able to bring their best self to everything that they do and function at their fullest. And on this video, I wanna distill down exactly what we need to know about glutathione and what does it have to do with good health, proper aging, and benefiting as much as you possibly can besides just taking it. So let's talk about what glutathione is. Glutathione is the body's major antioxidant in the body. It's made up from sulfur processes that requires amino acids that are sulfur-based, and it has a lot of different functions without getting too much into the weeds. But what you need to know is there's four processes besides just taking glutathione that we need to be aware of about. And in the first place, it comes down to why is glutathione signaled in the first place? So glutathione is an antioxidant, and it's also a ability to be used as a detoxifier. Those are the two main functions. It cell signals and it has a host of other immune supporting properties. But for the most part, that glutathione is a very power antioxidant and very powerful detoxer that we use in our bodies. So what we need to be aware of is how much should we be taking in the first place? So it's recommended if you're taking it orally, it will be anywhere between 500 to 2000 milligrams. Of course, talk to your doctor to make sure that you're a good candidate to take supplement in the first place. This, as always, is for nutritional purposes only and to be able to help support function through nutrition. So as far as that goes, other people will do injections. It's recommended no more than 10 to 20 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So the best. But this is where I have the problem, which most people aren't being taught. Why is glutathione being signaled in the first place? If there's inflammation, if there's stress, if there's toxic exposure, if there's environmental triggers that are causing your body to have to go down this pathway in the first place, then we know that there is a stressor that's incurring inside and outside the body. And it always behooves us to identify what those are so we're not putting all the heavy lifting on glutathione. The question comes down to, do we want to be supporting NERF2 24 seven? I think a lot of people get that wrong, where if you think about a sprinkler system and you go away on vacation, your sprinkler system is not gonna be on 24 seven. Your sprinkler system is gonna be systematically turned on when it's the best optimal time to provide the water for the nutrients to grow. Our body works very similar in that capacity. And I think a lot of the times, because there is so much signaling to be had, and there is a lot of genetically weakened SNPs that support this antioxidant response element, because we have a double whammy where we have the environmental triggers signaling the, the need for glutathione, and then we have the potential gene SNPs that make it that much more challenging. That's why it's very important to understand the pulsing of supplements and then you'll find in the anti-aging world and the biohacking world that that's an art of, of learning when to push, when to pull. So the first process we need to be aware of, signaling. And what's really important about this is NERF2 doesn't just signal glutathione to be made. It helps to recycle glutathione. It helps to determine where it's going. It helps to re- make the nutrients in there, and it also helps to support the other antioxidant response elements like catalase and superoxide dismutase to finish the deal. So if we don't have proper signaling, it doesn't matter how much glutathione you take, you're not signaling the mechanics to work effectively. The next thing you need to think about is how do we make glutathione? How do we synthesize glutathione? And we know that there's three amino acids involved in the process. There's cysteine, there's glutamate, and there's glycine. And those have to be available to be able to make the three amino acid compound of glutathione. And we have a lot of genetic weaknesses that we see in there, but we also have gut absorption issues. And then sometimes we supplement too much and we try to really play the maestro in our body and make it just so when it's not occurring in the natural way that we would normally have it. So we have to be very aware of the nutrients that we're using. But having a genetic test can be very helpful for pinpointing where those weaknesses are. Are you having problems with 
NAC and not being able to make cysteine? Is there a problem with glutamate and the way that alpha ketoglutarate makes itself available in Krebs cycle and all the gene SNPs that might be involved in there? And then are you having troubles with glycine? If we see specifically where those gene SNPs are, we can come up with a game plan to support those when it's time to help turn on the antioxidants with what we said is pulsing it in a way where we don't have those sprinklers on at all time. The other thing we need to think about is how do we utilize it? So one of the important enzymes is GST and GPX, and that really takes glutathione to help put out inflammatory cascades, but it also really helps it to conjugate and help in phase two of detoxification, where we see a lot of uh, pesticides and sprays and chemicals and things that need to get out of our body. So when people feel toxic, the first thing they typically go for is glutathione to help with that process. This is why. But the problem is, is that there's so many other phase two nutrients and processes and pathways that we need to be aware of, let alone phase one, and let alone the reasons why these phases are upregulated in the first place, we got a lot of other things to consider besides glutathione. Most importantly that I feel is recycled. So if you are that person that has had glutathione and you didn't feel really good, maybe this is what happened is if you don't have the ability to recycle glutathione up, and there's a lot of reasons that that could happen that I'll get to in a second, but if you don't have the ability to effectively recycle it, glutathione is going to turn into superoxide. And if you're not effectively clearing out superoxide, it's been reasoned that that creates that very dangerous compound peroxynitrite. Now there's debate on how much peroxynitrite is actually being produced, but suffice it to say, if you're not recycling glutathione, you have a whole new antioxidant need to put out that new free radical that you've created. And that can make you feel really awful and lousy. On top of that, if you're not recycling where NERF2 isn't signaling this, you could have major challenges. And on top of that, NADPH is a very common cofactor that is depleted and is being used for other processes that's causing this to go off in the first place. So there's a lot to consider. So it's not just about more is better with glutathione. I heard you should be 500 to 2000. It's not working. We have to think about why is it being signaled in the first place? Can we put support signaling through NERF2 patterns? Can we help it being made with the specific amino acids? Can we help it being utilized? In this instance is when a good liposomal glutathione product can be used, but I've checked the boxes and been aware of these other things much before I've implemented that, if that makes sense. And then lastly, the recycled, we can do the same thing for NERF2 to, the, to support the recycling. And we can also make sure that we're supporting with NAD or NADPH preservation, which I've created a whole host of other videos in that instance. And if you're interested to understand why is NAD not available, why is it having a very difficult time to recycle? That has to do with all of the other environmental triggers that drain our very important energy coenzyme. And if you're interested to see more, just click on the link above about how I teach you about how important the role of this coenzyme is in your energy production. And if you've had any value from this video, just go ahead, give it a thumbs up, give it a share, and make sure you subscribe. Hey there, I hope you're getting tremendous value out of our videos. If you are, make sure you like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on your alert buttons, and then check out the description below because I have a free masterclass that will teach you how to 10x your energy levels in the next 12 weeks and finally end your energy and exhaustion nightmare.